All right, guys, Matthew Hunter back and with a very important video, probably one of the most important right now, considering what's, what's going on. Very crucial. Um, go ahead and disregard uh, my hair. You know, with COVID going on right now, authoritarian governments have shut down businesses. And you can't even get a goddamn haircut nowadays. So, you know, we're just going to go and cover that mess up. Put on the 1776 hat. There we go. We got the Molon Lave come and take it shirt. And let's get into the video. As promised, I am going to give you guys today solutions to police brutality. You know, whether it's George, whether it's Eric Gardner, whether it's the countless black men throughout history, including other races who have been brutalized, even me personally, who have been brutalized by police officers over the years. Um, we need it to stop. We need justice, right? You know, everyone's out protesting. People are upset right now. Riders, people are burning down cities. It's getting crazy. I don't hear a lot of solutions out there. So I'm going to give you in this video, a very important video, an actual solution of how we can end systemic abuse by police. And it's actually more simple than you think. Now, first, I'm going to start by getting in this video. I'm going to have to get one of those selfie sticks. This will make it easier for me. But uh, let me just tell you first, let me pose a question. How many security guards do you guys know of right now across the countries that have killed unarmed black people. Go. Now, I'm going to give you a second. You might be able to find a few here and there. But the point is, and why I'm giving that example, is very simple. It doesn't happen at nearly the numbers as police officers. That's obvious. Now, why is that obvious? Well, a security guard works in the private sector and a police officer works in the public sector funded by the government, funded by your taxes. Now that where that in itself is why we have a lot of the problems with police and systemic police injustice. When you have a business or something that is operated and they are the monopoly and there's no competition of that, it makes it very difficult for them to be held to account or standard to have high quality service. Let me give you another example, a very simple one. If you were uh, in a small community and you had a pizza shop and you were the only pizza shop in the whole town, you know, what's your incentive to put out the best pizza possible and have the best customer service? You still may do it out of integrity, but you know that things may slip or it wouldn't be hard to imagine that the, the, the it being shitty pizza in that town because the guy who runs a pizza shop, the only one in town knows, hey, no matter what, people are coming to buy my pizza. I got the only pizza in town. Well, that's kind of what's happening with police officers and police forces in general across the world and why we have problems with policing today. It's very simple. It comes down to funding. It comes down to them being in the public sector versus the private. Now, let me explain this to you. Like The next common question that people are going to be posing to someone like me is, well, how the hell are you going to fund the police? What are you calling for exactly here? And what I'm calling for is exactly that police and the whole institution of policing communities to be put into the private sector rather than the public sector. Now, let me give you an example. So when things are in the private sector, they uh, there's no law uh, eliminating another individual from starting that business, right? Same with the pizza chain. If someone wants to open up a pizza chain, there's no law in the book saying that, hey, you're only allowed to open one pizza chain in this country or in this city. So, you know, if you enabled competition in how policing was done you would enable that competition would hold the whole institution to a better account right so you wouldn't have things like officers getting killing people and getting paid vacations right the same way if, as a security guard you go out and kill someone you ain't getting a paid vacation you know there's the difference there but the difference is in how the institutions are set up right it's the legality it's all the rules that come with the security guard versus the police officer, right? The security guard has a lot more liability. He can be sued. His company can be sued. You know, you know, it doesn't exist like that for the police officer working for the government. Now, another problem with police. So when you have a tyrannical government or governments in general, it is the police officers who are the enforcers of said rules, right? Whether the rules are moral or not. So let's use marijuana, for example. Isn't it ironic how here in Canada now marijuana is legal? So, you know, I can walk down the street, I can puff a joint, walk by police officers, no big deal. But yet if I were to go into a time machine, go back, you know, a couple years ago when it was when it was illegal and I did that exact same action, that action would have got me kidnapped, thrown in the back of a police car, 
if you're a black male, who knows what else could have happened, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to play that, if you want to play that, uh, that uh, leaning perspective, but the point I'm getting at is, it's weird how we have this things, you know, when government says, oh, well, this time it's okay, this time it's not, you know, same with slavery, a couple hundred years ago, you could own a human, then we had this awakening, hey, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to own a human being, human beings are free people, you know, it's immoral to do that stuff, and same with marijuana, same with all these other laws on the books, right? So the government uses the police officers as their enforcers, right? Laws cannot be enforced unless they have the police officers to enforce them, right? Who's going to abide by them if they got no enforcers to, to lay down the punishment, right? So it puts police officers in all these conundrums all the time, right? One minute the police officers going in, to, oh, well, I'm following my orders. I've been told to go violate that protester's right, or I've been told that you know, I got to go tell that person he's got a quarantine or that person's not allowed to be in the park right now because we're in a pandemic and that person's not allowed to open a business. So, you know, it gets all this fuckery because the politicians are dictating the orders of these officers. Whereas we should, you know, it's very simple. What's right and wrong? You know, what's the morality? We should get back to principles rather than all these stupid ass laws, you know, but that's the problem. And where am I going? Oh, sorry. Chain of thought brought, uh, broken there, but what I'm getting at is we need to get back to smarting, smarter policing. We need to figure out how we can fix this institutional injustices, get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is funding and there's no competition. So right now, if there was multiple police forces fighting for competition to police your neighborhood, the same way that, you know, insurance, you know, you can call up, um, state farm, you can call up, uh, you list it, you name it. There's a gazillion different insurance farms, uh, insurance farms uh, you can buy, uh, auto insurance. And if one of those companies treats you bad, you'll go to the next one. So if the black community, for example, was being policed by a police force that they're all voluntarily paying for in the free market, the same way you pay for auto insurance and all these other things, and those police officers started killing people in their community that they're being paid to serve, all those individual people in that community could withhold their funding and stop paying for the injustices, stop paying to be brutalized, stop paying for officers to go get paid vacations. We don't see that right now. There's no option for you to stop paying for your local police poli police precinct. And that's the problem, right? They have a monopoly on the service. They're the only thugs in town to enforce the rules. You know, so that's why the problem is always going to be there. It'll never change until we fix that. So next question that I get posed all the time is, well, how the hell are you going to have police officers? You know, well, same with firemen, man. A lot of firemen are volunteers or, you know, the same way you pay for auto insurance. Hey, if I'm worried my, my car is going to get broken into or I'm worried I'm going to hit someone on the road, it's probably a good idea that I buy some auto insurance. Hey, if I think my house is going to get burnt down one day or broken into, I should probably get some home insurance. Nobody's forcing you to buy those things. You do it because it's a smart decision. Because if you don't, the repercussions could be you have a house burnt down and no protections. You ran into someone and killed them, and now they can sue you for millions of dollars at a year personal pocket. So, you know, there's smart reasons why you buy insurances and you and you, and you you buy those things in the private, private market. Same with police. You know, people will say, well, who's going to pay for the police if the government isn't stealing your taxes to fund the local police station down the road? Well, if police are so goddamn important... People will pay for it voluntarily out of their pockets because the service is worth it. The same way nobody forcing anyone to go to their local Best Buy and get the latest iPhone, but yet everybody got the iPhones and everyone's got all the newest tech and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because people want that stuff because it's worth the money. Well, you know, what's worth more money? What's worth more to you the money than your safety, right? A lot of people say, safety is important to me. Well, you'll pay for that the same way you'll pay for all auto insurance and your iPhone and all these other things you go and buy in stores voluntarily. So that's how you get to the fix the root of the problem. The whole problem is the system, the system, the monopoly on everything. And then that gets me off into taxes and how government funds itself and how that's a big racket and problem. You know, I'll pose this question to everyone right now too. <clears throat> Whether you're on the far right, the far left, the middle, no matter where you're on the political spectrum, somewhere along the lines, you're paying for something that morally or or legally or just, you know, your thoughts, you don't think you should be paying for. 
whether you're uh, pro war and you you know you're you know got people who are not are not pro war nobody pro war but the point I'm making whether you're anti war sorry anti war and your taxes are going to pay for wars in the Middle East whether you're for uh, abortion and your your money is going pay uh, being paid in taxes to fight against abortion or whether you're uh, you know you're not for abortion and your money is going to pay for abortions what I'm getting at is Every person on the political spectrum can find a a government program that is being funded through their taxes that they morally don't agree with. So why do we accept that, right? Why the hell would you never walk into a, a store and when you go to check out, the store says, all right, here's your receipt. And you notice there's a couple extra items on your receipt. And you'd be like, what the hell? I, I just bought a phone and a case. I'm not paying for the TV. How the hell did that get on there? Oh, well, sorry, sir. Uh, we're just got to add that on there because, uh, you know, someone in the community needs a TV and we got to all chip in and stuff like that. No, man, that wouldn't be acceptable. Like, no, I'll, if I want to help someone, I'll help someone voluntarily. Don't steal my money. I'll make that decision. That's what taxes are. It's governments having the authority to just take people's money under the guise of taxation, which is just another word for theft. And that's the root of the problem, folks. That's why the whole system set up the way it is to fail and why we'll constantly be fighting you know oh i hate trump let's get trump out oh i hate obama let's get obama out. it's just constantly each side fighting to put their own puppets in not realizing that the whole goddamn system is set up in a way that's always going to have the same problems when people can stick a gun to your head and take your money in the form of taxes to fund programs you know, across the board for people whether you agree with them or not that's wrong you know how you fix the world's problems government problems prison problems uh, uh you know policing problems all the problems that we fight against today and we rent uh, we vent and rage over comes down to the fact that governments are funded through theft when things are funded voluntarily they work out a lot better when things are left to the free market they work out a lot better because the free market once again i'm gonna say it a hundred thousand times creates competition Right. So right now, if, if in Minneapolis right now, they were so upset with their their police officers. If there was another police officer, uh, you know, another group or another um, business, not business. Uh, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm saying? But another company of police officers who jumped in and said, hey, listen, we will sign a contract today saying that we're going to police differently. We're going to police in your community. We're going to guarantee that we're not going to uh, go on the offensive. We're not going to put people in these kind of positions on the ground, you know. More competition in that market would eliminate a lot of the problems. So hopefully, you know, I rambled for 13 minutes and I can hopefully get through to you guys what I'm trying to say here. Um, for me, it makes sense because I've had 10 years plus of research in this stuff. I know when I first heard the term taxation is theft way back when I was like maybe 15 years old, 16. I was like most people, what? You know, it made me think like taxes are theft. What do you talk about? You know, it's just... Uh, we're paying our deeds. We're we're paying our part for to have all these beautiful things like roads and and schools and hospitals and police. And well, if we didn't, how the hell would we have these things? And then it took years and years of studying the philosophy, studying the free market, and realizing these things. So I know there's a lot of people listening to my video right now who think I'm talking shit. You know, it'll take years down the road to accept the information that I'm putting out. Some people may never accept it. But, you know, at, at, what at least what my principles are and what I call for in this world is peace. And, and you know, I think that's a good thing to call for. You know, it's what Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King, Jesus, I think is a pretty good message to get behind is peace. And that's what all anarchists, anarchists are like myself <coughs> or small government or no government at the end of the day people are is we want peace. We don't want people to have a gun pointed to their head and being forced to pay for things. It's that simple. And you stop doing that single action, watch how many problems get solved. And you watch how the police injustices overnight get fixed. And we know this by looking at security guards versus police officers. You know? And they can they do kind of the same job. Now some people say, well, security officers, you know, they don't do this and that. We can we can we can make it work, man. You can make security officers do just the same amount of work as cops do. <clears throat> so trust me stop out there protesting and burning down cities without any solutions you want the solution the solution is withholding your taxes but you know that, that's hard to do 
And you'll see what happens when you withhold your taxes. You get jackbooted thugs come to your door and want to put you in jail for tax evasion, all this other bullshit. So we must continue to spread the message that we need competition in the market when it comes to policing. And I believe it should be privatized because then you have more competition and we can fire the bad cops and they can be held account. There'd be no protection of this legal guise of government that now it's okay. Because if you as a citizen went out there and kidnapped a person because they were smoking a joint in a park and threw them in, a, in your basement in a makeshift cell, well, that'd be kidnapping. But if a police officer does it at all, it's okay now. If one year it's acceptable to throw people in jail for a plant and the next year it's not because a politician all of a sudden passes a new law, blah, 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 blah. All this mess of legislation, all this mess that government creates and all these messy programs and, and selling us out through uh, uh, generational debt and all this other bull crap. You know, you can, you run your credit card up at a certain point, the bank's going to shut it down, but yet the government can just run the national debt up with seems like no limit selling un, un, unborn children out through that debt you know i didn't sign up to sign up for any of the debts that are being uh bailed out in my name right now but it's just disgusting the behavior so we need to get to solutions and not and not start rioting and and, and, and just venting our anger out there i understand it but we need to get to the root of the problem and the root of the problem is always going to be government is funded through uh through taxation which is theft which is a uh, 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 basically, the government's just a monopoly on the use of force. You know, they got to get out of jail free card. And, this, and we, when we stop giving people get out of jail free cards, when we universalize our principles across the board, hey, if it's not okay to steal, it's not okay to steal for anyone, no matter what the hell their job position. If it's not okay to murder, it's not okay to murder for anyone across the position, whoever, whatever job or title you're in. If it's, you know, once we start universalizing principles, that's how we'll achieve true freedom. That's how we'll truly enlighten the society. And that's what I've been preaching for years and years and years. And I will continue to preach. So stay tuned for more videos to come. I'm your host, Matthew Hunter. See you guys in the next one.